Hey guys, in this video we're going to introduce to you the new Thrunet TH20 headlamp. And uh, what we're going to do here is we're actually going to do a quick tabletop review on the TH20 and then we're going to compare it to the Phoenix HL23, which is probably the closest competition out there on the market. So if you just want to see that, skip ahead. Otherwise, we're going to talk real quick about the Thrunet. Now, what is it? This headlamp is a small headlamp that takes a AA battery, but it just doesn't take a AA battery. Of course you can use alkaline batteries, your plain regular alkaline batteries. You can use your rechargeable nickel metal hydrides, and you can also use um, your Energizer Lithiums. But on top of all that, you can also use the lithium ion rechargeable 14500 batteries which are a higher voltage and will give you a uh, super high turbo mode. So let's talk numbers on this thing and how it runs. So this thing is going to be a little different than what you're used to. Instead of having just a high, medium, low or a bunch of different modes, this actually has an infinite uh, brightness setting, which pretty much what it lets you do is choose any brightness that you want. And it also has a memory, so that if you pick a brightness, you shut it off, turn it on, it'll come back to that brightness. So to turn this thing on, there is a clicky on the side here with a rubber boot, and that turns the light on at whatever, and you can see I had that set on a low setting. You hold that in, and you can see the light will get brighter. Hit to the beacon mode, go back down, beacon again, and go back up. And it will continue to do this, so if you get a brightness mode you like, and we'll let this go back down, just let go. And it holds there, which is kind of neat. At any time, if you want to go up to turbo, double click and bam, you're at turbo. Double click again, you are at beacon. This does not have a strobe mode, just the beacon mode. Click again, turns it off. Now, if you want to access the moonlight mode from the off position, you just hold in the button and it will turn on the lumen mode, which is pretty much like a third of a lumen very dim just for uh, you know real simple kind of stuff then I, uh, another click turns that guy off so number wise like I said your firefly mode is 0.3 lumens and you can get using a uh, regular uh, rechargeable battery about 14 days now your infinite brightness will go from 1.6 lumens from which was about 21 hours to your high which is 230 lumens for 95 minutes. Your turbo will be 253 lumens for 93 minutes. Now, if you switch over and put in the lithium ion battery, you're pretty much going to have the same, except your turbo is now 520 lumens for 37 minutes. So, your working voltage is 0.9 volts to 4.2 volts. Typical stuff, IPX8 waterproof, impact resistance to 1.5 meters, comes with some extra O-rings and a uh, replacement uh, holder there for the uh, headband. Very typical construction. Your battery goes in this end cap right here. You just screw it off, put it in. You have the XPL LED, the V6, which is one of the better on the market. A very small orange peel reflector. And like I said, your switch is on the side and it is recessed also so you don't have to worry about turning the light on if you accidentally drop it or something like that. I really like the uh, rubberized holder for the headband. It's very flexible. You don't have to worry about a hinge. You just move it as you need it and adjust it. It just holds by friction and uh, you have an extra one that comes with it if it breaks so you can replace that very easily. I do prefer those. Um, if I can break it, I will, and oftentimes any of these with the uh, kind of plastic hinge, like this, I will break them. Very good at breaking those. So, just wanted to show you that. So there's your operation, your basic run times. I've gone through, checked this thing with uh, a 14500 and a uh, rechargeable AA, got very uh, consistent numbers. To what Thrunite is saying, as usual, Thrunite doesn't really exaggerate 
with their uh, run times of brightness. Now, I did have some difficulty measuring brightness because this thing throws out such a wide beam. It's a very floody light. It's not what you're going to be used to. You're not going to be able to see long distances with this. And that is uh, something you're going to have to take in mind when you're looking to buy this. If you want to see 100, 200 yards, this may not be the light for you. It puts out a very wide, floody beam. Very good for close-up work. This is a great light if you're, you know, working on your car or, or doing some very close-up work because it does have that uh, beam that spreads out very good and it's a nice even beam. There's not uh, a really big hot spot in the center, so it's a great little work light. Um, the only complaint I have about the light, period, is that the tint is a little on the green side when it comes to the LED. I'm not sure why that is. It is sold as a cool white, and it's not going to show up on camera. But when you put this on a white wall, and you can almost see it. There's just a little bit of green to that tint, which I don't get it. I'm not sure why it's happening. I did kind of let Thru Night know about it, so I'm not sure if it's just that's the tint on that batch of uh, XPL V6s, or if it is some kind of a problem. I guess we'll, we'll find out as time goes on. Yeah, you can kind of see it in here, like a really bit of a green color. You don't notice it, guys. I'm not, it's not a huge deal. You only notice it when you put this thing on a white wall. If you're out in the woods, you're in your backyard, you're not even going to notice that tint. It's really just, you know, for those people who are, you know, putting it on something light colored where you're, you're actually going to notice that or you're comparing it to another light. So, overall, as usual with your through night, you know, it's got good run times, good power, good versatility with batteries. Like I said, you know, you can use, you know, your regular alkaline, your rechargeable, your 14500, or your lithium primaries. So, wide variety of choices, and you're going to get different uh, results depending on what you use. For example, your outlines never really last the longest and they fade in brightness relatively quickly. Your uh, rechargeable nickel metal hydrides are going to be very bright and hold a very good steady beam the entire time until they die out suddenly. And then, of course, your Energizer uh, lithiums, those are going to run kind of in between. They're going to be very bright, but they're not going to fade as bad as a, an outline. Your 14500, well, that's your drag racer. You've got a lot more voltage. It's going to be a lot brighter, but for a lot shorter period of time. That's your uh, sprinter as opposed to a marathon. So with all that, I've uh, torn this thing apart. Instructions as usual with a through night. Everything's built well. Everything seems to be put together perfectly. Like I said, the only complaint I have is that greenish tint to the LED. So let's talk about the HL23. Very similar, as you can see, very similar size, very similar shape. The only major difference in construction is that the uh, HL23 does have a bigger area here for the uh, reflector, and it uses the XPG2 LED, which I will not understand, guys. The XPG2 is old, old news. It's, it's already been replaced. The XPG3 is out. It's old, and even, you know, you're going to say, oh, well, the XPG2 you know, throws better. Well, that is true, but, you know, the XPL High is, does the same work pretty much, and it's, you know, a better LED, it's more efficient and all that. So I don't understand why they're using old technology, maybe they just don't want to change, I don't know, but that's one of my complaints about Phoenix. They're always using old LEDs, it's, you know, if you're going to pay top dollar, and this Phoenix is five dollars more, if you're going to pay top dollar, at least get the most current stuff out there, you know? I mean, how can, Thrunet can put out a better LED for less money. So, difference of course there with the LED and a little bit in the shape there. You can see that uh, sticks out a little bit more. So you get a different beam profile. The HL23 is a little more, a little more uh, throwy. You can throw a beam further. Pretty much the same idea. You have the clicky on the side. Now this one operates differently. To turn it on, you have to push and hold the button for a long press. That turns it on. And then you have three modes, low, medium, high, which are uh, three lumens, 50 lumens, and 150 lumens. So right away, this thing's outclassed. It's, you know, 100 lumens behind the through night. And then there's, let's forget about it, no turbo mode that goes to 500 lumens. So you're really getting a lot less. You're getting 30% less light 
with an alkaline battery. And then when it comes to this thing, this can't even use the 14500, so you're not getting anywhere, you know, above that 150. So that's kind of disappointing as well, you're, you know, because they choose to use that old LED, you know, you know, you're not going to be able to get the higher numbers out of that, which is fine. You don't always need huge amounts of LED or of uh, lumens. That's fine. Turn it off as a long click, but no strobes, nothing else, no firefly, just that 350, 150 setting. Um, construction's the same. Battery goes in on the end. Shows you right how to open it. I've torn this thing apart as well. Construction on it's good. It has good springs. Everything seems to be built well. No issues there with construction at all. Phoenix seems to build them nice. They just use old LEDs. Another thing I do not like is the uh, connector for this. Or uh, connector, what is it? I don't know. Whatever holds the light. Now, it's made of a hard, rigid plastic, which pretty much means if it gets cold, it's going to get brittle. It could crack. You drop this in the cold, you're using it in the winter, it could crack. And uh, that's always an issue. Plus, it doesn't come with a replacement one. So, if it breaks, you're pretty much SOL. And as you can hear, it has a bit of a ratcheting adjustment to it. But it's only halfway. So when you're wearing this thing, if you kind of are trying to point it up or something like that, it's not going to have any friction. It's just going to flop around. But then once you start putting it down, you have all these little clicky stops in there, which I'm sure is just a little ratcheting mechanism in there to hold it. Once again, that's an area where if you're out in the woods, that can get dirty, that can get grimy, that's going to wear down over time. And, you know, if you're using this long term, it's something that's going to wear down and eventually just stop working. It's all plastic. You got plastic on metal, it's going to wear. You know, the metal's harder than the plastic. It's just a fact of life there, guys. So that is a concern as well. You know, why not go with the simple, you know, rubberized thing that's softer and friction fit? I don't know. Maybe I'm just being overly nitpicky, but I don't like it as much. Plus, of course, you know, being hard, if it, you have a weird shaped, head, weird shaped head, putting something on, and it doesn't fit the contour of your head, it can be, you know, a little uncomfortable. But, you know, that's one of my other things. I, I, do, I do prefer, I really like through nights thing here. These plastic things, I think, are a lot better. They're comfortable on the head. They form fit really well, and they hold the light very still. Um, you know, like I said, something like this. I'd be worried you get it cold, you drop it, you smack it, drop something on it. It's going to break. Plus, I'm sure just over time, these little uh, teeth in there that hold that are going to wear down. So overall, these things are pretty similar. They're pretty similar. Size, shape, except, you know, you're getting a lot more with the throne knife. You're getting a lot more lumens, 100 more lumens, and then you're getting an extra almost 400 lumens when you use a 14500 in turbo mode. I think it's a better setup on the headband. Uh, the only major difference, guys, I think if, if throw is important to you, how far your beam goes out is important, your Phoenix wins because it does. It throws the beam out a lot further. I took the through night out. I got, you know, like you'd be lucky to see a person at probably 50, 60 yards. The uh, Phoenix, on the other hand, you could probably see a person to 100, 120 yards. The XP G2 does throw better. It has a little better throw to it. And with the longer reflector in there, of course, you're going to have a, a better beam. But that is the difference, though. The Phoenix has a tighter hot spot. The, uh... So what you essentially have is a light that's set up to throw and a light that's set up to flood. So there is a difference there. If you want a throwy light, it doesn't make sense to buy the TH20. If you want to flutter, it doesn't make sense to buy, you know, so it is part of uh, your preference as well, what you're looking for in a light. I think the TH20 would make a really good backpacking light because of the variety of batteries it can take. Plus, it does have that really strong, you know, turbo mode with the 14500. So if you really need it, you're lost on a trail or something like that at night, you got it. Plus, you can really easily pack together a small uh, recharger with a uh, solar panel, a small folding solar panel. And have this thing rocking the whole uh, the whole trip as well. So a lot of differences, but overall, I think uh, two good lights. But the Thrunite does outclass the Phoenix, uh, just in versatility. You know, as long as you don't mind having the shorter range with the Thrunite, I think it definitely 100% outclasses it. it. Uses the more modern LEDs, 
better efficiency, better run times, better everything. So I hope you guys enjoyed.